Hi, and welcome to a quick guide on our new intent-driven design. Fusion has always allowed you to model components either internally or externally, but our default experience has always guided you down the internal routes. This has meant that many users who preferred the external workflow had to work hard to find the right tools. With this update, we have released a preview that makes this smoother than ever. And we do this by asking you one simple question at the start. What would you like to design? You can choose parts, which give you a focused environment for geometry creation, assemblies, a dedicated place to bring these together, or hybrid as a flexible design, which is the fusion behavior that you're familiar with. The key point here is you choose the approach that suits your workflow. And if you need to change your choice later, that's easy and fully supported. Let's have a quick look at each of these workflows, starting with parts. I'll begin creating a part. Even here, I can choose whether this is a standard component or a sheet metal component. When I create a standard component, I'm placed in a focused environment designed specifically for core geometry creation. All the tools I need to create a single or multi-body part are right here. As you can see from my extrude tool, I no longer have the option to create a new component. That's because this is a part and parts are single components. So no more confusion on having multiple bodies in the wrong places in assemblies and removing the need for rule number one. When you're in a part experience, we've got a smooth workflow to be able to push this into an assembly. I could either send it to a new assembly, which creates an assembly design and inserts this part in ready for the next, putting me on the right path forward for a good clean assembly structure, or I can add it to an existing assembly, which is a great way to add it to something you or your team are already working on. This is an example of a classic bottom-up workflow, where a part's built in isolation and then brought together. Ideal if this part's gonna get reused across multiple assemblies and it shouldn't have geometry references to a single design. But what about top-down modeling where you want those associative references? That workflow is just as powerful and easily done externally. Inside an assembly, I create a new component, and here we have the choice for parts or sub-assemblies. Let's go for a part. From here, Edit in Place lets me reference whatever geometry I need from the rest of the assembly. For example, I can create a spacer using the dimensions from the bracket to define its diameter, and then extrude it to match the height of this motor. That's how easy it is to reference multiple parts in a top-down workflow using an external component. And you probably didn't even realize that the toolset was contextually aware and changing between assembly tools and part modeling tools dependent on your intent. This is an extremely powerful workflow, making sure you combine the best of associative modeling with the good structure and collaboration that external components provide. Let's take a look at hybrid. Hybrid is Fusion's behavior you're most likely familiar with. You can start modeling and Fusion asks you about component creation after you make the features rather than up front. This gives you the freedom to mix internal components and external ones all within one design. Hybrid is great when you're doing ideation or want the simplicity of single document modeling. And because this is intent driven design, there is a chance your intent may have changed and you can seamlessly move between these environments as your project takes shape. Take that component that we first started with originally, rather than adding it to an assembly, we could have just as easily have converted it to a hybrid design instead. Or you could go from a hybrid design to an assembly design when you want more structure. The choice is yours. The key here is you'll never trap down a workflow based on a decision that you made at the start. So whether you prefer top-down, bottom-up, internal or external, intent-driven design lets you start with the right approach, stay flexible throughout the process and evolve with you as your design matures.